Um, now, um, you can visit our blog, but what we did in this video cloud comparison blog is really put together a sample set of how much it would cost to take 100 terabytes of data, put it up into one of these hyperscaler providers, and access about 10% uh, of that data every month, right? We really want to show you <clears throat> how much this would end up costing you. And there's some, you know, pretty interesting uh, findings here, right? So we said, you know, let's take AWS and we took three tiers, right? S3, infrequent, Glacier, and Glacier Deep. And the reason we took these three is because we said, hey, you know, what are the more cost-effective ways to store your data in each one of these providers? Uh, the same thing for Azure, uh, Cool and Archive, and the same thing for, for Google Cloud, right? And what you'll notice is if you kind of take the total cost uh, per year, uh, ranges, you know, at the high end of about, uh, you know, $31,000 for the 100 terabyte uh, to the low end of about, you know, roughly $14,000 <throat> for the 100 TB, right? Uh, now, you know, that to a lot of people would be like, hey, you know, that's, that's, <clears throat> that's still expensive than keeping 100 terabytes on-prem, right? So what we did, we, we started to kind of dissect this number a little bit, and this is kind of where I'll cover the whole egress versus uh, access, right? So <clears throat> let's look at this column for a second, right? Uh, this is the cost for the storage and the cost to access the data. So storage is obvious, is the cost that you're paying to store your data. Access is the, is the price you have to pay to, to touch that data, right? And this is... You're going to be charged access whether you take that data out of the data center or leave it in this data center, right? So access is different from egress. Egress is if you actually pull that data out of your data center, right? So something that's very interesting is <clears throat> if you access, if you store your data, all right, and never access it, well, the numbers become really, really low, right? So if you look at uh, S3 Glacier Deep and Azure Blob Archive, we're roughly talking a hundred dollars a month to store a hundred terabytes of data, right? So that's a roughly $1,200 a year to store hundred terabytes. So this is cold storage. <clears throat> you don't believe you're gonna access it. It's a deep archival copy and that's great. It means it's not that expensive to store your data in the cloud, right? Let's take the next step. Let's take the cost of storing and accessing that data. Now, when we say accessing, it means you're accessing the data but you're repurposing this data in the data center itself by spinning up a virtual machine in the cloud. <clears throat> and in that case, if you are repurposing roughly 10 terabytes or that 100 terabytes every month, you're still not paying that much, roughly $240 a month versus $300 a month, right? So both on S3 and Blob, you're ending up paying anything from $2,400 to $3,600 a year, which also isn't bad. Now, the place where this starts to get expensive is if you end up adding egress, right? You're paying roughly close to $1,000 a month on egress. And that's really what's important to understand, right? So if you take Glacier Deep and Blob Archive, $14,000 a year with egress, $1,200 a year with no egress, and twenty four dollars to $3,600 a year with in-cloud access, right? So the conclusion here is that these bigger cloud providers can actually be very, very cost effective when it comes to storing your data. They can be cost effective for repurposing and access as well as long as you spin up those machines in the data center. And if you decide to egress it, that means you're pulling your data out of their data centers, that's when they start to get more expensive. All right. Um, Chris, you had an interesting story as well, right, about... Uh, uh, yeah, trying, yeah, trying I do. That's right. So I remember when we were first, I was working at a different company then, and I, we were first working at AWS. Um, right. And uh, the CTO requested a restores test from, from Glacier. Um, and then on the same day, he ordered something from Amazon Prime. And uh, would you believe it? His package arrived before the file did. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I mean, I mean, and, and I think that's, that's, you know, I mean, we, we, you know, there's humor in that, but also <clears throat> some considerations, right, that uh, there's definitely a lead time, a time to access your data, right? So definitely put that into consideration here. Uh, but, you know, in conclusion, I think you want to be looking at hyperscaler providers, you want to be considering them, 
uh, when cloud to you is more than just backup and archive, right? I mean, if you're considering or there's a possibility that you would be uh, you know, editing or transcoding in the future, you want to look at these guys. Uh, and then, but also, do you have the technical expertise to navigate these providers, right? Um, and one of the expert tips we can give you is that, hey, you know, as long as sort of you can uh, navigate these providers and you can repurpose in the cloud uh, and, and understand their complexity and deal with it, I mean, you know, I think, you know, hyperscaler providers, uh, can provide you the lowest cost of storage, uh, you know, for your data, correct? Yeah, and I, TC, I'd just like to add that you need to be prepared to walk away from your data um, yep, with these guys because the, the cost of downloading everything from the cloud could be excessive. Yep, um, yep no, exactly. Yeah, and I think that's where egress comes in, right? And and further mm -hmm. to the point that it's great to keep an LTO copy around, so. Yeah, yeah, because Oftentimes with them, um, deleting data is free. So yep. if you have a copy on LTO and it just, it can just be on the shelf. It just needs a, a one drive and, and, and put everything on the shelf. But if you've got the data copy on premise, you can delete for free and you don't have to down and you get rid of the egress costs. Yep. No, definitely. Uh, yeah. And again, you know, as we said, you know, we'll, we'll keep harping on this point that on-prem copy, you know, you still need that. And LTO is a good way to do that. Um, now, one of the things that we've also done is build some considerable uh, integrations with these hyperscaler providers with our platform, DNA Fabric. Uh, Matt, you want to give us a few highlights of what Fabric can do with an AWS, an Azure, or a Google Cloud? Yeah, sure. So, you know, based on this slide here in particular, I'd like to note that, you know, our clients have been using these providers you know, for backup, um, as you mentioned, cheaper storage in the long run. So people are doing backups, they're doing snapshots. We have clients that are actually conforming to this storage. So they're, they're uploading their high res up there, throwing an ALE at it and restoring back only what they need. Um, but you know, another area that you kind of talked about with this and where our clients are taking advantage is the extra compute services that these providers offer. So uh, they can spin up edit, they can spit up transcode, they can spit up AI machines in the cloud, take advantage of their data that's sitting up there right next to them and the costs stay down. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. and then finally, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some of this in the niche section towards the end, but you know, we'll get to that later. Cool, no, excellent. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's what we're starting to see is that especially with COVID, a lot of our clients are looking to these three providers to, to assist in the scaling up of their infrastructure, right? You don't want to go out there, buy these physical systems uh, when it's easy to sort of click up, click a button and spin up a few uh, Premiere or Media Composer edit base, right? So, uh, you know, that's another way where we're seeing a lot of interest in cloud and, you know, our platform fabric is helping these clients uh, get to cloud more efficiently.